Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Bex. Uh, I'm a member here at Christ Central and it's so lovely to see you all here this morning. Uh, whether you're tuning in live or whether you're catching up this afternoon, um, if you're so welcome here. We're really glad to have you. So this morning we are uh, picking up from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 verses 22 to 23. Uh, as Debbie left us off yesterday, uh, Paul was just starting to go into his uh, boasting. Spiritual boasting, of course. Whatever anyone else dares to boast about, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my enemies, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness, the God of the Father of the Lord Jesus who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under the King Aretas had the city of the Damascenes guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. Here, Paul is boasting in what the Lord has done in him. Not that the Lord had commanded him to boast, but Paul is merely highlighting the huge contrast between how he lives compared to how the Corinthians live. They live according to the flesh, seeking their own desires, devoid of the Holy Spirit, and they aren't actively seeking God. Paul boasts of his identity, and he boasts at great length of his weaknesses to show where his strengths come from, which is God. We'll soon be in chapter 12 of this book, and apologies for a spoiler alert, but in chapter 12, verse 9, God says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul then boasts all the more gladly. He also boasts about his heritage. Are they Hebrews? A reference to his Jewish upbringing. Are they Israelites? A reference to God's chosen people under the old covenant. Are they offspring of Abraham? refers to being part of the new covenant as well as a true descendant of Abraham. In Romans 11 verse 1, Paul says, I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham, further demonstrating that he is an equal against the false prophets who are questioning his background. But then Paul goes on to claim that he is a better servant than the Corinthians. Why is he better? Because he is grace-filled. Paul talks about the grace he received back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. He says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. This seems a far cry from Paul addressing Timothy, where he says in 1 Timothy, verse 15, 17, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Acknowledging that he is the worst of sinners, but again, by God's grace and mercy, Christ works in Paul. Now he is full of confidence and filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul can brag about his identity because he knows who he is. 
one of God's chosen people, holy and daily loved and deeply forgiven. Paul also knows whose he is and whose authority he now lives under. He sees God in all his majestic wonder. Paul knows God's place in his life and he knows his place in God's. As much as it sounds like he's moaning when he's listing all these sufferings, he is actually crediting his strength as coming from God. We can look at this list and feel massively humbled. Can you imagine having a pint with Paul and saying to him, I've had a tough old week this week. And Paul just looking at you and saying, really? Really? Well, let me tell you about mine first. And I doubt any of our weeks would involve being shipwrecked, flogged and in danger from bandits. And although he mentions being shipwrecked three times, Paul was actually shipwrecked again in Acts. But although in the Bible Acts comes before this book, the events actually happened after this. If you don't know the story, Paul was shipwrecked off the shore of Malta. And that night, as he was adding wood to the fire to keep warm, a viper came out of nowhere and latched onto his hand. What a night he was having. So although Paul doesn't know at this point, he will actually have another shipwreck to add to his story, as well as a bonus snake bite thrown in for good measure. On top of all this that he's experiencing, he's also experiencing the anxiety he feels for the church. He's basically saying, to top it all off, I have you lot to worry about. He is being very open and transparent about how their behaviour grieves him and how earnestly he longs for them to turn from their ways. When Paul is making his slightly odd asides of, I am out of my mind to talk like this, and also, I am speaking like a fool, you'd be forgiven for thinking that perhaps he was going a bit mad. But Paul is actually out of his comfort zone here. Boasting is not in Paul's nature. It once was, but it's now alien to him. Which shows how the Holy Spirit can transform you, as it did Paul. To not only reverse his habits, but to make him feel uncomfortable to exercise them. God is amazing. If you think he can't change some things about you, he can. Just look at how he changed Paul. In Acts 19, verses 13 to 16, shortly after Paul's conversion, when God tells Ananias to go to Paul and give him back his sight, Ananias responds, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. God used Paul greatly, but he knew Paul would also suffer greatly. But God is using it for good, to bear witness, so that the Corinthians can see that A, Paul, who was previously a nasty piece of work, has now been utterly transformed by God, and they have the opportunity to do the same, as do we. Notice also that previously Paul was acting under the authority of the chief priests, and now he acts under the authority of God. And B, that although here is a man who has suffered so much, not just for his faith, but also for them, he keeps going. He endures so much for their sake. What an inspiration to see that in action. If God can use Paul, the worst of sinners, the least of the apostles, and the weakest of men, to accomplish these extraordinary things, then he can certainly use you to accomplish equally great things. Your past, your sins, your mistakes, your successes, your joys, and your sorrows. Although some of these things we would prefer to forget, they are part of who we now are. And God will use it to witness to others as to how he has blessed us and how they too can receive this blessing of eternal life. And I finish in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for the inspirational characters we have uh, to base our lives upon and to, to inspire towards. And thank you that you used Paul, who saw himself as the worst of sinners and the weakest of men, and the amazing things that you did through him. And we thank you that thousands of years later, his word is still having an impact. Um, the words that you gave him, Lord, and that you chose him as your instrument to communicate these words. We pray that you bless our weeks, Lord, and just uh, keep our eyes fixed on you. Amen. <laughs>